it a boon or a bore to be the son of a world famous sportsman and how does the shy young teenager transform into an international cricketer? Those are two questions on which my guest today is uniquely qualified to speak because in a sense they frame the issues in his life. He is of course Rohan Gavaskar. Welcome to the program Rohan. Thank you. Kala. Let's start with your cricket. It was in January this year that your dream of playing for India came true. I gather you were in Jamshedpur when you heard the news. Yeah, I was with the Bengal team. Uh, we had our zonal one days going on. And uh, I remember the CAB secretary, Mr. Bablu Kole, calling me up and saying, telling me that I was selected for Australia. Magical moment. Couldn't stop smiling for three days after that. <laughs> but could you believe it or did you ask him to repeat the message? No, I, well, I'd, I'd had a pretty good uh, uh, India A series before that against Sri Lanka. So I was kind of expecting it. But, you know, in these matters, you never... You're never sure till you actually get there. Absolutely. Yeah. You want, you were probably a little worried. Have I dreamt it? Yeah, true, true, because I've dreamt about this moment since I was 10. So, you know, <laughs> it was finally good to have the dream come true. Now, in fact, the first game was in Brisbane. And do you remember the way Saurav said to you that you were going to play? Yeah, it was actually the uh, morning of the game. I only played because Virendra Sevag uh, was injured and couldn't play the game. Saurav during the warm-up said, you know, you're on, you know. Just like that? Yeah, he said, you're on, you know. And, but, but they told me the night before, okay, I might be playing in, in case Viru doesn't play. So I mentally prepared myself to play. And during warm-up, Saurabh and Saurabh told me, you're on. And he also, he was actually fantastic. He said, you know, don't worry, because, you know, as a debutant, you'd prob probably be a bit nervous. I was very nervous. And he came up to me and said, don't worry about anything. You won't be judged on one game or two games. You'll get equal opportunities, ample opportunities you know, five, ten games, so don't worry, just go out there and enjoy yourself. You know, you said you were nervous, and yet this was a dream come true. It was something you were waiting for all your life. So how did you control your nerves? Oh, I don't know, because it, it became a standing joke with Viru. I was supposed to bat at number three. Um, and as the match progressed, we went to, uh, my batting number shifted from three to four to five to six. And in that period, I went to the loo at least 15 times. <laughs> so I don't think I controlled my nervousness too well at that point. So... <laughs> So, but yeah, it was it was just fantastic playing playing with the big boys, playing playing at the Gabba against uh, Australia. It was the highlight, brilliant. many people say, was the Andrew Simmons catch that you took. Everyone saw you dive for it on TV. How difficult was it in reality? I don't know. It was just a blur, to be honest. It just happened. Um, it's something which again you dream about. You know, taking these diving catches and you know hitting sixes of the last ball and you know getting a hat trick. And when it happened, it was. It was an instinctive reaction. Yeah, absolutely. It wasn't something you saw coming and said, I'm going to die for it. No, no, it was just an instinctive reaction and, and a magical feeling because it was a crucial wicket. And I'd, I, I'd got my first international wicket. And your dad was in the commentary box watching it happen. He got ribbed for it, didn't it? Everyone said the sons had a better start than the father. I think so. I think Ian Chappell even said uh, that I get my bowling ability from my mom. So You, know. <laughs> you mean she bowled your dad out? Absolutely. <laughs> No, but it's good because uh, in the sense I got I I got my first wicket with the fifth ball and he got his first international wicket with his fourth ball. So, unfortunately, even in that department, he's way ahead of me. In fact, he made a point of saying that, didn't Did he? he? he yeah, did. Apparently, on, in, in the commentary box, he announced that actually his son wasn't better than him. The, well, I not much to say about that because uh, he is way better than me. Not much later at Adelaide, you hit a sparkling 54 with what, three fours and a six? Was that your own personal high point during the Australia tour? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely, because uh, it was the first time I got an opportunity to bat for a long period of time. Uh, first international 50, so it will always be memorable. And when I went into bat, we were in a slightly precarious situation. Me and Lachman got a bit of a partnership going, and we won that game, so very memorable. Sorry. Odd thing is that once again, this is the sort of record that you vie with your father over because you got your first 50 in your fourth game and he got his first 50 in his fourth game as well. A coincidence, but you know, if, if I get half a good a record as he has at the end of my career, I'll be a very satisfied man. But he must have been very pleased to actually see you make that 50. I, I hope so. I mean, I'm sure he, he was. He didn't say so? He, he did, he did, but uh, he was very happy. I mean, like all fathers would be really, you know, to see to see the son do well. Now, the amazing thing is, Ron, you've probably lived your life with people saying to you that you have a huge advantage being Sunil Gavaskar's son, but the truth is quite often it's been the other way around. Well, I don't know. It's, 
it has many advantages, you know, to be honest. Uh, I never complain about being Sunil Gavaskar's son. I'm, I wake up every morning. It feeling, would be very strange if you did. Yeah, no, I, I wake up every morning feeling proud of, of what he's done, what he's achieved. It, I mean, the love that strange people come up to me and shower on me just because I'm his son is phenomenal. I mean, you've got, I've got strangers coming up to me in Tripura, Agartala and saying, you know, you know, come home for dinner, your dad was, you know, we were his biggest fans. And, you know, I mean, it's just small gestures like this which uh, make up all, all... And those are no doubt lovely feelings when Absolutely. people remember him Absolutely. and as a result recognize you. But there have been moments when people like Nari Contractor, or sometimes quite often the Indian Express, have picked on you and repeatedly questioned your selection. And that must have been difficult to take. Not really, no, in the sense, uh, with with Mr. Contractor, it's it's his personal opinion and obviously doesn't rate me as a cricketer. But it, that doesn't change anything. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who, who rate me as a cricketer and a lot of who don't don't rate me as a cricketer. It's a, it's an individual opinion and there's not much I can do to change it. Um, I've got the highest regard for Mr. Contractor because, you know, he's not only played for the country, but he's captain the country. Except that Nari Contractor wouldn't have made comments like that about anyone else. It was only because he was Sunil Gavaskar's son that he chose to make the comment. Well, I'm not sure if... I'm, I'm sure Mr. Contractor's a just man and if he thought there was someone else whom he didn't rate as a cricketer getting into a team, I'm sure he'd probably you know, make a comment. Your dad, it, of so. course, said in an interview that these people were, in a sense, not picking on you, but they were using you to pick on him. It was their way of showing to the world that they weren't influenced by Kavaska. Uh, it could be true, could be true, but uh, like I said, I just, you know, I just love playing the game. And it's I, the game that matters. It's, it's the game that matters. I don't, I don't think too much about, you know, whether they're picking me or uh, they're trying to pick on my dad through me. It's, it's not something that I really think about or worry about. It's not in my hands. It's not something I can really do about. So why bother about it? That's true, and that's probably the right attitude. Yeah. But one of your friends, Sabah Karim, once said that probably no player in the game has had to face so many bad decisions as Rohan regularly has to face. Would you agree with that? Uh, well, I've had my share of bad decisions, but I'm sure there are a lot of cricketers who, you know, a lot of batsmen who grumble about you know, getting the odd bad decision. It's part of the game. There are times when, uh, to be honest, I've been given not out when I've been out. It evens out. But I've had my share of bad decisions, and unfortunately, some of them have come at crucial times in uh, in my career. I get the feeling that life and the sort of criticism you've had to face up to and the bad luck that you've had to handle has toughened you, that you've learned to put up with it and, if need be, put it behind you. I think you have to. I think, you know, you learn learn through life, and uh, it's it's been it's, it's been hard initially playing uh, cricket because... Uh, uh, there'd be a lot of media following me when I started off, started off playing, and that was a bit tough. But uh, yeah, it toughened me a bit, and you know that helps because when you're playing international cricket, you need to be tough. Are you in fact a naturally tough person, or have you had to learn to cope with adversity? Because you faced quite a bit of bad luck for years in just about making it and not getting into the team. I'm a big softy. <laughs> I'm a big softy. I'm not a naturally tough person, but. Uh, you cope with things and, and situations as they come. And so you've uh, learned to put steel armor around the softness. Absolutely. Now, when you play for the Indian team, Saurav Ganguly, of course, is your captain. But in Bengal, it's the other way around, isn't it? Yeah, true. Uh, but that's also generally because Saurav comes in for a game or two and he doesn't want to spoil uh, the team balance and, and the fact that, you know, I've been captaining throughout the season and I, I know what the players have been doing, which players have been batting well, which players have been bowling well. So I think uh, he, just, he doesn't want to spoil that. that and is rhythm. he an obedient team player? Does Absolutely. He, he listens to his captain. He listens to his captain. He's a team man to the core. He, and you love giving him orders. <laughs> <on the field. laughs> no, 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 no. It's, he actually advises me quite a bit when I'm captain. He, you know, he comes and tells me, this, he, you know, you should try and do this, you know, try and do this. And it's always great to be playing with him. They say that one of your personal ambitions is to get three international wickets. Why three? Uh, good, good question. Uh, that's because Dad has two international wickets, and that's probably the only department where I can get ahead of him. So three is three is the target. Somewhere or the other, you're determined to be better. For sure. I mean, I'd, if I get three, I can sit on the dinner table with him and tell him, 
uh, three wickets that try and beat that. How far are you away from three? Two. And Two the more. other ambition, I'm told, is 19 first class centuries. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's another ambition because that has 81 and 19 would make it 100 in the Gavaskar family. So you want a century of centuries? That would be a good people. milestone to get to. So 19 first class. <laughs> Last year, you got married to your wife, Swati, someone you've known for well over 12 years. Yeah. Are the papers right when they refer to the two of you as childhood sweethearts? Absolutely. I mean, uh, I've known her since school days and uh, she's the only woman I've ever really loved. So You mean you decided when you first met her as a schoolboy that you were going no, to marry? No, 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 no. We were just good friends. We, uh, you know, we studied together. We, uh, we grew up together and, you know, growing up together, we were really good friends and somewhere down the line, uh, we realized that we are made for each other, soulmates. You said somewhere that what you really like about her is the fact that she's not easily impressed. No, not not at all. I mean, I I had to go through hell to impress her. Really? <laughs> yeah. She's not taken in by you. Not at all. Not at all. She's she's seen through me. She's seen through the facade, and uh, took me a while to impress she her. She runs you around her little finger. Are you a henpecked husband? Uh, well, no, I wouldn't say henpecked, but I try to keep her happy. <laughs> I try to keep her happy. Now, you say that she is very determined and very demanding. Is that why you had to propose in verse? Yeah, yeah. It's on um, bended knee? On bended knee. I, I, I was going to propose to her in a different way, and I thought of many things. I couldn't come up with anything, so finally I thought I'd write a poem and propose to her. What did she say? Yuck, or maybe, or yes? Yes, <laughs> emphatic yes. <coughs> Ron, let's take a break. I want to come back in part two and talk a little bit more about the Rohan Gavaskar the world really rarely gets to see the real person that actually is known to his friends only. We'll sure. be back in a moment's time. Don't go away. Welcome back. My guest is Rohan Gavaskar. Rohan, let's start with your name this time. It's not simply Rohan Gavaskar, is it? No, it's not. It's uh, Rohan Jai Vishwa Gavaskar. So it's uh, not only the burden of a Gavaskar name, but it's got Rohan Kanai, Jai Sama and Vishwanath. And isn't there a Sunil there as well too? Yeah, Sunil's there as well too. A lot of runs to live up to. <laughs> <laughs> now, your dad was away when you were born, and I gather it took quite a while before the news caught up with him. Yeah, yeah. he was in New Zealand uh, with the Indian team and uh, um, when I was born. In, and and for a while, he knew he knew uh, he'd had a kid, but he just didn't know which sex the kid was because uh, in the excitement uh, when the message was passed, they passed forgot through, to say. Yeah, they forgot forgot to say whether it was a boy or a girl. So he just knew he had a kid, and and his uh, and mom was safe, and the kid was safe, but he didn't know if, if it was a boy or a so girl. So how did he find out that it was you? I think it was after a few days uh, uh, when he did actually get to speak to uh, mom. That, that he now you were an me. only child, and a lot of the time your parents were away on tour. Were you lonely? Did you miss them? Uh, well, I did miss them, but not lonely because my grandparents really looked after me well. Uh, never gave me any cause to complain. Looked after did me. Did they spoil you? Absolutely. No, all grandparents spoiled so me. So whenever your parents came back, they had to discipline the little boy himself? Absolutely. Absolutely. No, but it, I was never lonely because luckily I had a lot of friends with me, my grandparents, and it was, it was a good childhood. Not surprisingly, you were probably obsessed with cricket from almost the day you were born. Yeah. I gather that at the age of three, you used to use the game as a cure for fever. True, true. Uh, not, not always, but there was a time when I had really high fever and uh, uh, the family doctor came home and, and she was saying uh, she diagnosed as some, some sort of uh, high fever. And, and as she was leaving, I just said, I want to play cricket. And my grandparents were a little reluctant because they thought, you know, with, with fever and the exertion would probably not do me good. But she said, no, let him play cricket. Let him do what, what makes him comfortable and happy. And, and I played cricket for about five minutes. And the fever came right down? No, I don't know. I, I, I'm assuming it did, but I was just too tired after about five minutes of cricket. I fell asleep and it was better the next day. Now, in those days, it was bowling that you were really fond of. I yeah. thought that you had a marathon-like run-up that went all over the house. Yeah, this was when I used to play with Dad. Uh, he'd be batting in the living room. I'd run, I'd, I'd run in and out of every room. You know, run into the kitchen, run out of the kitchen, run into the bathroom, run out of the bathroom. Uh, just trying to gather some momentum and pace. And then come at a distance of four feet and bowl to him. And still not get him out. <laughs> <laughs> and in those days, Jeff Thompson was your hero? He was, he was. He, uh, I don't know how or why, but I was a crazy Thomo fan. It was, uh, in fact, the uh, first day of school, I... 
had this huge poster of uh, Thomo in, in my room and I touched his feet and went to school. Every single day? No, on the first day of school. Uh, because, you know, you know, I touched my grandparents' feet and then went straight to Thomo's feet, touched his feet, took his blessings and went to school. The amazing thing, however, is that when it came to actually sending you to school, your parents deliberately chose an institution that didn't play cricket. Why? Uh, I think when, when they decided on which school to send me to, they weren't sure if I'd take to the game. I mean, to take to the game. You mean uh, your dad hadn't seen the Gavaskar spark in his son? No, I don't think he had. <laughs> he, he wasn't sure if I had the aptitude or the ball sense to play the game. And, and who knows, I may, I may not have liked the game 10 years down so the line. So they were playing safe. They didn't yeah, want to yeah. put you under pressure. Yeah, and they didn't want to put me under pressure and they wanted to make sure I got a, uh, got a good education. So, so I've, I've, I've got no regrets with or complaints with the school they sent me to because that's where I met Swati. So. Definitely no complaints. And in fact, the other thing is that despite the fact the school didn't play cricket, you blossomed as a cricketer while you were at school. And in fact, at the age of 15, you made your debut with the Shatkar Trophy. Yeah, that, that's uh, a tournament which is played in Bombay uh, as a selection tournament for the under 15s. And uh, I got a double hundred in, in, in the Shatkar Trophy. And it was that, that again is a very memorable innings for me because that was my first big hundred. And it sort of gave me confidence uh, into the game of cricket because I knew I could play a beginnings and you know uh, make a name for myself. And that was of course your first big performance. Were you conscious that your parents would know about it, may even have been watching it and that this was going to in a sense prove to them that you were your dad's real inheriting son? I wasn't conscious but you know I, I, was, I would have definitely been happy if they'd seen me play that innings. You know, They missed it? Uh, that's a bit of it I think. He, he'd park his car and you know peep uh, slightly through the car seat because he didn't want to make me nervous by being there. So I think he saw a bit of it. Uh, I don't think my mom saw it because mom, uh, whenever she comes to the game, unfortunately she's come thrice and she's seen me get out for a duck uh, every time she's seen me. So mom doesn't bring you good luck at all? Mo or do you just get nervous when she's in the stands? No, mom, mom, mom brings a lot of things. Mom brings uh, a lot of good luck. Uh, she just needs to time her good luck well because whenever, <laughs> when, the first time she came she, uh, uh, I got on the first ball, the second time she came, I got on the second ball, the third time she came, I got on the third ball. So maybe she needs to come after I've settled in and got a few runs and then that's when the good luck will take me through. Now your friends say that as a teenager, and this is pretty hard to believe, Rohan was tongue-tied, nervous and shy. I still am a shy guy. I mean... Uh, what have you done, hidden it? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm shy in the sense I... Um, I'm a, I'm not sure whether people uh, you know would would uh, will accept me you know in the sense uh, uh, you sound a little unconfident about yourself. No, no, it's just some people sometimes you know uh, don't know how to react to you, and I don't want to give a wrong impression, or so I just tend to keep to myself and be quiet. Uh, but yeah, I'm still still a shy guy. They say that this changed in a big way during a holiday in Kenya. When your friends caught you on the phone to your mother. Yeah, well, I'm a big mama's boy. And this was my first holiday uh, without family. Uh, first holiday away from mommy? First holiday away from mommy. But to be honest, it, I can't say without family because I went with the Piramal and they're like family to me. So it was with family but without mommy. And, you know, I felt sick on the first couple of days. And uh, as it is with all boys, when you're sick, you know, that's when you think of mommy. And, you know, I had to make a call to her, speak and to her. And you burst into tears. <laughs> I, well, I didn't burst into tears, but... <laughs> but they just poured out. <laughs> well, it was one of those days when nothing was going right, and you know, I was really missing her, and yeah, well... And you couldn't control your eyes. Couldn't control the tears. <clears throat> now, they say that after that, he completely changed, and he spends all his time teasing and playing pranks. Well, that's something I think I've inherited from Dad as well, because Dad was quite a prankster as well, so... Along with the cricketing genes, I think I've inherited the prankster genes, genes too. Really? Yeah, yeah. No one realizes that your father is a prankster. No, he's a massive prankster. I think if you speak to any of his colleagues and teammates, they tell you he's a big prankster. Now, a friend of yours in Calcutta, Soro, says that you once discovered the secret of his front door and took to filtering his newspaper every morning. His front door could be opened with any key. It could be opened with your car key, your house key. It was just unbelievable. and. Um, I'd like a good friend. I'd go to wake him up every morning, say cheery, good morning, sir. But and you take the newspaper. He'd be fast asleep. He'd be fast asleep. So I thought, you know, why, why wake the poor chap up? 
just take the newspaper and, and carry on. He says that it began with the newspaper, then he began taking all his cookies as well. His fridge was absolutely stocked with, with delicious cookies and chocolates and you know, when you're there early morning, haven't had breakfast, it's a good thing to <laughs> bite into a cookie or two. And I gather that in addition to being a pretty deft hand opening front doors, you're a superb mimic. Well, I wouldn't say superb mimic, but growing up uh, with friends, you know, there was a stage when we were huge Die Hard fans of the movie Die Hard. Mm -hmm. And um, I'd always, always be Bruce Wayne and a friend of mine would always be Alan Rickman and we'd jump over sofas and hide into in closets, you know, with imaginary guns, shooting each other and just, just having a blast. Now, this is very strange, but in addition to having a blast, I'm told that in the bathroom, <laughs> he's virtually an operatic singer. They, they make fun of me because I, I, I can't sing. I mean, it's something which I've always wanted to do. Uh, have a good voice, carry a tune, but I just can't carry a tune. Now, hang on, you say that you can't sing, but your friends say, and I'm going to try and see if I can quote it accurately, he thinks he's got a terrific voice. Mm, I think they're just trying to con you into trying to make me sing a few lines on the show, but uh, I can't sing. Got Not at all? That. Not at all. But you do it in the bathroom regularly? Because no one can hear me. <laughs> And you're very possessive about your cricket cap. Yeah, it's that, that again is something I've learned from Dad. Uh, the cricket cap and sweater, I've seen what it meant to him. It, it, uh, it's an honor to wear that cap. Not many people get the opportunity. Only 15 uh, from a country of so a What million. happens if your wife puts it on? No, she, she doesn't. She, she doesn't. She, doesn't. She, she wouldn't she, dare. She knows better than to put the cap on. She, it's it's uh, something I'm very proud of and I don't I don't let my friends or my or, or even Swati you know wear it it's only if you've played for the country you've, you know you've worked hard sacrificed and you know got there that, that cricket is everything to you it's it's a big part of my life it's a, it's definitely a big part of my life but you're also determined to ensure that it's a part of your life not just Rohan's son or Sunil's son no it's yeah no absolutely I mean uh, fortunately, I've, I've created a niche for myself in domestic cricket. I've got an opportunity in Australia to uh, create a name for myself in international cricket. I've started on that, and hopefully, a few more opportunities down the line, I'll, and I'll create a niche for myself Were in international cricket. Were you very disappointed cricket. when you didn't get picked for Pakistan? Uh, well, disappointed, yes, but you know, it's it's only 15 can go on a tour, and uh, and fortunately, I wasn't on this 15. Uh, hopefully, I'll be in the next one. Tomorrow is another day. Tomorrow is another day. Rohan Gavaskar, a pleasure having you on the program. Pleasure to be here, Karan.